Uh, hi, Cindy. It's uh, Jag from uh, UK. Thanks uh, for calling up for this planning session. Um, thanks for putting up the CT scan. I can see this, the CT scan. We've got a, uh, a gentleman with um, uh, squamous carcinoma in the left alveolus uh, around the first molar region is the epicenter. So can you show me the left heavy mandible, please? Yes. Sir. And then the reception margins I would want just there are some retained roots and an uninterrupted eight. So if we can drop down the posterior resection uh, at the distal of the retained roots, please. OK, kind of run through here. And the anterior resection is going to be coming forwards uh, at the probably just mesial to the canine, please. Okay. That's it. Thank you. All right. So we'll just double check the resection from below. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. All right, and then did you want to go ahead and use the right hip for the reconstruction? Yeah, I mean, let's start with the right hip just because there'll be more space on the right side. It's a contralateral side to the resecting surgeon. Um, so we can make a start with the right hip first of all and see what that looks like, please. OK. And if you can give me the uh, distance away from the anterior superiorial spine of about two or three centimetres, uh, but Perfect. just see how well it aligns. And we'll orient the superior aspect of the of the crest at the inferior border, correct? Yes, please. All right, that looks like it'll fit in pretty nicely to the mandible there. So I'll just kind of rotate, make sure we have good alignment between the segments. All right, and then what kind of height do you want on, on the hip? So if you can take it up to the uh, alveolus, actually, I'm gonna, this is a partially dentate um, uh, patient and I want to dentally rehabilitate him with implants in the three, four and six, um, in the three, four and six region. So, Probably give me a little bit, uh, probably a little bit lower actually. I tend okay. to find if, it's, if there's not enough restorative volume, it's difficult to restore. Um, so keep going down. Thank you. That's it. Perfect. Okay. And is just a straight osteotomy okay, or do you want that to be more curved? Um, you can put a little curvature on there actually. Okay. Yeah. I just need to find if there's a bit of a curvature, it just adds a complexity to the cutting jigs, but uh, a, a gentle curve is fine. Super. And if we could just zoom into that image on the scapula overlay and just show me rotation around. So the next um, step, Cindy, can you show me um, the uh, fix? Should we, should we go to the fixation next or do you want to do the cutting jigs for the DCIA? Yeah, sorry. Um, so are you looking to have, um, do you want guides designed as well or do you just want like the planning? Uh, guides as well, please. And if you can give us an option of the kinds of guides that 3A, uh, 3M offer as well as uh, Striker, please. Okay. Yeah. So all of our guide design work is done offline. Um, so once we have the plans kind of set, I can get you um, images of those. We can we can kind of incorporate them into into like a video, just kind of rotating them around if that works. Yeah. Sure. What can you, have you got a reference point of the types of guides that you've got? I do. Um, yep. Okay, so <clears throat> our most popular options, yeah. um, and this is in our traditional material, the Arthurview plastic material, yeah. would incorporate the marking walls. Um, our standard would not include any fixation or um, a handle on the guide, okay. um, but we can include um, a handle just to help kind of hold the guide in position as well as fixation holes. Um, we can also account for 
any amount of soft tissue that you're kind of anticipating on the bone as well. Perfect. Um, the other option in our in our generic um, material, the, the traditional material would be cutting guides. So we'd have the metal slot inserts at the osteotomies as opposed to the lower profile marking walls. Okay. So I'm happy to go with the cutting guide. Uh, it does mean a little bit more dissection um, of the muscles off the iliac crest, but it, it's, uh, uh, it certainly is easier to cut once you've freed off the uh, attachments. So, okay, back to the, um, the planning, please. Mm -hmm. So the next step is we've got the guide design, uh, the fixation design, please. For the... When you say fixation, are you referring to the plate, yes. the custom plate? Okay. Please, what I'd like ideally is three screws on all three elements, please. Okay, perfect. Now, I know that you've got two types of plate sizes, 2.8 and 2. What's the general consensus or what are, the, what are our colleagues nationally and internationally using for fixation? Are they... Are they leaning towards a size three or are they leaning towards a, a sorry, a size 2.8 or a size two? Um, I would say the 2.0 is pretty popular. Um, yep. We do have the ability to add extra strength to the plate um, by increasing the bar width at specified locations. Um, yep. So if there is concern, you know, if you're wanting the lower profile, but a little bit more rigidity, we can add more of the strength to make it a, a stronger plate. OK, well, I'm, I'm happy with two. So I like that plate position. I, I'm happy with the screw uh, design. So it should be a fairly straightforward plate. Um, what I'd like to also add to this um, is, um, should we do the cutting guide design for the resection uh, and the cutting guide design for the plate fixation as well? What options have you got? Yep, I'll mm -hmm. show you. So for the mandible, Um, we can design them with, with the cutting slots that have the metal inserts. We can design it as either connected with a strut below the inferior border or as separate. Yeah. Um, or if you want a lower profile option, we have the marking walls instead of the metal slot inserts. So I prefer the, the previous option. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a huge amount of uh, uh, periosteal uh, release required to particularly get at that posterior ramus. But what I would prefer is a connecting bar uh, just because I find it a little bit more difficult. I know that we can we can specify the anterior cut through the canine position, um, but uh, you have to have an ex extension around the corner of the contralateral side to get some localization of that. So if we can have it connected, that will certainly facilitate a more accurate resection, please. Okay, perfect. Um, and then for the predictive holes that align to the custom plate, yeah. We have a few options here. Um, our default would be the marking holes um, that are just kind of a flat hole without the drill sleeve um, to mark the locations. Um, in the middle, we have the open bottom, so you can pre-drill those holes. Um, or the last option would be having the predictive and fixation being one and the same. Um, I, I quite like predictive and fixation the same, actually. It uh, simplifies things. Okay, perfect. Um, and then going back to the plate design, did you want to add any extra strength to the plate or just leave it as is? I'm happy as, uh, as it is. Okay, great. So here's kind of a simulation of the plate here. I'll just rotate it around. Um, seems to be adapting well to the anatomy throughout, so I don't really see any areas of concern unless you'd like anything adjusted on your side. So the only one potential issue is the, uh, I, I do plan, plan to immediately dentally rehabilitate this patient and whether the implants will be in proximity to the screw fixation. Uh, we can place the implants and we might need to adjust, adjust the position of perhaps that uh, uh, the fourth screw hole from the anterior aspect might need mm -hmm. to just be used either forwards or backwards depending on where the dental implants will go. But let's go with that at the moment and see what we've got. Okay, perfect. And what size cylinders did you want me to bring in for the, for the implants? implants? Okay, so we've got, we're missing a canine, a premolar and a molar. We don't need to go further back than the molar tooth because the uh, opposing arch finishes at the first molar also. There's plenty of evidence that a, a short arch with one premolar molar would suffice for uh, dental uh, function. So I think um, let's go for a four millimeter cylinder and okay. a minimum of 10 millimeters in length. And if we put 
one in the premolar region. So if you can overlay the original tooth position before the resection, and it'll help to pinpoint the position of the implants. That's it. And are you thinking two, two implants or three implants? Yeah, I'm thinking two implants. Uh, if you can put one in between the canine and the premolar, and then if you can put one in the molar region. Okay. All right, so I'll just get these kind of preliminarily placed and then we can kind of fine tune the position. Yep, that, that looks lovely. The uh, molar could just go going in a little bit more lingually, uh, okay. but that looks very good. And then I do have this extra tra trajectory um, here with the yellow, uh, just yep. to make sure that we are contacting the upper dentition Perfect. I like that. Um, what's the depth? So from the the superior border of that uh, new mandible, uh, what's that depth? That's 10 millimeters, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the length of the cylinder is 10 millimeters. What's the relationship of that and the distance from the screw holes? Um, let's see. I'm just going to bring in the current plate design here. It'll take just a second to load. Yeah, that looks fine. So we can actually go for slightly longer implants, 12 millimeters. OK, um, okay happy with all of that. Um, do you, is there a way that you can provide me with a guide for the placement of those implants into the overall guide design? So um, not incorporated into the hip guide. Um, something that we've done in the past is made like an occlusal based guide that then has um, like a platform um Perfect. to and, and typically it's just to guide the the location and not necessarily the full trajectory of the implant is that okay or do you want us to yeah. try to adapt something that that'd be perfect actually. jag okay. yeah jag just yeah. to say when i've used before i i when we've used one a guide that covers the plate and the implant it's really cumbersome i think if you go for this suggestion with the occlusal would work quite nicely yeah, sure, I agree. I mean, I, what I've done previously is I've done a suck down splint, which I've yeah. uh, used, but this is a way of getting around uh, yeah. that problem. Yes, please, if you can make that, if you can build that into the planning case as well, please, uh, a, a occlusal guide for the placement of those two implants. Okay. So that I think is pretty much the total planning case. Just to recap, we've got a guide for the donor site, we've got a guide for the reception, we've got fixation design, a dental rehabilitation, and a guide for the dental implant insertion. Anything else, Cindy, that I've missed? Uh, nope, that, that all sounds like it covers it. Um, one thing I wanted to ask was the plate design, if you wanted this anterior hole repositioned, or if that's okay there. It, it's fine. I mean, it's the implants uh, are, are going to be 10, 11, 12 millimeters. Yeah. That, Need to place a longer implant than that. What I tend to use for DCIA is an osteodensification technique because we're not, you know, the outer crest is on the inferior border, so you do it is a softer bone quality uh, on the inside uh, mm -hmm. aspect. So I'll densify that bone out. But no, that 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 uh, plate, uh, that screw. Actually, I mean, you you could move it. I guess if it's not too much of a problem, just slightly further back, and then there's there's no chance of it hitting. Yep, just kind of in between. Yeah, yeah. If we just stay in between the implants. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Brilliant. Yep. Thank you, Cindy. So finally, now logistics. Um, you've got the prescription. Uh, the case is for surgery in two weeks time. What's the next step in terms of turnaround and, and how long before we get it uh, um, signed off and then sent out? Yep. So the next steps, um, I will send the plate design to the striker team. Um, did you want to proceed with verbal approval of the plate for today or do you want to wait for their formal documentation to then approve? I'm happy to speed things up with a verbal approval of the plate design. 
Okay, great. Um, so just keep in mind to look at the documentation. Um, there, there's um, warnings and specific jargon um, pertinent to the plate that is good to you to kind of review, but I will go ahead and let them know that you have approved the design. Um, we will then have a case report that has all of the guide designs um, for the mandible and the hip. Um, you can improve that and then uh, we will go ahead and proceed with production and shipment. Perfect. Thank you, Cindy. Yep, of course. Bye-bye.